Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Wednesday. July the 3rd, day before the 4th, the holiday, and we're looking at the Dow 13. At 39,346, right at that inside track repellent zone, we actually now have no short positions at all because I think there's, a, there's been a change in the market uh, since the debate. And as it stands, the market appears to be looking towards some kind of resolution that it, they, they think is market favorable. That's just the way I'm interpreting it right now, and the market seems to be interpreting it. That can change at any moment, but that's what we're looking at. Therefore, um, it, it becomes understandable why an SMH, the semiconductors, could be moving up here, not very sharply, not in anywhere close to the 279.57, high of June the 20th, having gone down to the low 250s, and now it's at 264. Um, I decided that we will just watch this to see if there's going to be. There, there was, in fact, an arch formation. It was a successful one. Is there now a second arch formation, a larger one, that sits in the 270-ish area? That's where there's a mark, a, an SMH turnaround. Or does it actually go back and retest the highs? I don't know because if you're looking at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is kind of worn out. It's had its high of uh, 700. Oh, 700. 140.76 on the 20th of June, plummeted down to the 190s. It's trying its best to rally. It looks like the SMH is without today's bounce. It's trying its best. It's down 37 cents. And I'm suspecting that we are looking at a rotation that says there's a chance. It's just a chance that we're looking at the strong becoming not the weakest, but the strong taking a breather. And why, why do I say that? Because let me just run these through. Um, I did it for the update. Did I just do it? Uh, I, I better do it again. I, I've just been looking at so many trading and doing so many charts. So the Dow is right up at that resistance at 25, up 25 at 39,358. If it's able to get to the 39,500 area um, by maybe Thursday, by Friday, I'm saying, then by Monday, we could actually see a new recovery high to 39,571.72. And that goes to a leg D. The diamonds have already done that. Um, so within that context, we're looking at the diamonds possibly going to a leg E. So that's bullish. Uh, nine period moving average has been strong, and that's a very big positive. Going to the S&P, the S&P trading just underneath the last high, with a, way over the nine period moving average, which is way over the 14. Until we start to see some kind of change there, I'm suspecting that there's a slight bias to the upside. You can see we're not making massive new highs, but we are making new highs. And that's improving the weekly chart because it's still, it's in leg E if by Friday, the 5528.64 level has been hit or taken out by one penny. That extends leg E. You can't get a peak E until next week. Uh, and that, that look at this monthly chart, how it's going right into the inside track repellent zone, and it hasn't broken out above it yet. I think we said that it would be uh, 63.50. Let me just double check because it's it's a rising. So this is June. Yeah, 50, 56.40 area would be a breakout, and it has to be done in July. I, I'm not sure this is the month that it actually does it. We'll see. Looking at the IWM, uh, no, the QQQ, so the QQQs are kind of working in relationship to the SMHs. They've gone to a new high. Is this a new F, uh, an old F with the, with the sequence continuing? Or was that a P? I, I, there's a really good chance that I might have to make the 460.58 high of around about the 27th of May, the high. And then up arrows starting right there in the 440s in the QQQ. And this becomes peak A, peak B. Little double top, 
and then it goes to a nominal C, and this is a D, so it means that you could still go quite a bit higher in the uh, QQQs, making the 479 to 470, no, 482 to 479 area kind of important near-term support. IWM is the one that I'm saying. There's a chance that we're starting to see, maybe we're starting to see the laggards become the leaders. Look, here's the IWM. It's got a long way to go to break out. It's a 202.95. It's only up a dollar. But look at this. The 205s, if it gets into the 205s anytime in the first part of July, that's going to be really positive because it says the weekly chart can now improve because that MACD is still very weak. But that nine-period moving average has remained strong. It's a, it's a benchmark here. Yeah, it's held. It's a, it's a core ingredient that says so far the technicals the key the the technical of last resource last resort the 914 has been holding really well so there's a chance that we could start to see the laggards that's the iwm the russell 2000 start to move and that corresponds to what am i looking at look gold was acting so poorly by making lower lows and lower highs but in the spectrum, when we looked at the weekly chart, we said, no, no, no. It's just a big digestive phase. The nine-period moving average is still way over the 14. And even in the daily chart, it's still pink, even with this big move of 36 points up to 23.70. A close above 23.83 in the next, you know. Don't forget, gold will trade overseas tomorrow. It's not the Independence Day around the world is only America. So we'll see what happens. If you look at silver, I'd say the silver chart was much better than the um, gold chart in the sense that the weekly chart never, it, it just touched the 14 period moving average. But look at the distance between the nine and the 14 period moving average. So that's the reason we, we're in the silver stock. And I, I will talk about it in a moment. I didn't want to because it, it just didn't fit the questions that I was being asked. But I got a question the other day. Someone said, I saw you had the um, Chapman Wave stalk leg formation in two charts. What was the other chart? I'll do that in a moment. So here we've got silver right on the border of breaking the inside track repellent zone in the daily chart. The weekly chart is still a work in progress because it just held very well. There's nothing I can say other than it's still holding well. And the monthly chart needs a, a break to the 30 I'd say 3150 area to say, wow, now that's a big improvement because the stochastic still only at 70 and it needs to get to 80. And same thing in the uh, uh, weekly chart. Now, let's, so uh, let me, before I do this, look, Bitcoin is pulling back. I'd say that I've got in a sell mode uh, in the daily chart, a sell signal in the weekly chart, which could, by the Friday, could become a sell mode because it hasn't turned pink in the nine period moving average. Is down 1565 as uh, 60,620. I'm anticipating that, I, and I'd say 55 is kind of 57 to 55 would be my target to the downside. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, oh, TLT. The TLT we were discussing the other day, I said, ha, huh, look at this. Held the inside track propellant zone. Will this become, you know, these are all techniques that I discuss. I have webinars on it. Um, on all of these techniques, look how pertinent it is. Look how it was a break in the weekly chart of the resistance. It became a propellant. And now what's happened is that the weekly chart for the TLT, that propellant line has become a very important support line. Look at that. Look at that. Right on the support line. And it co corresponds to the inside track propellant zone here. So we'll see if this big move in the TLT is telling us that maybe yields are going to come down short term. I'll be back. Dow's only up 20. S&P is up 9. Starting to improve. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're looking at the CLT, which is the uh, Treasury bond, 20-year uh, Treasury bond, iShares, having a good balance. But look what's happened to Toll Brothers and the others. I've been talking about this for weeks, saying there's a good chance that they are done for now. Uh, ever since the May mid-May high of 135.37 in Toll Brothers, uh, we saw this island reversal, and it's just been going to lower lows and lower highs. Right now, there's a little bit of a bounce, maybe because it's the TLT, but you've got a peak E in the uh, daily, peak E in the uh, weekly, and the monthly is E. Now, let me just show you something here that I think uh, would be pertinent. Um, I need to go to this chart right here. Let's see where it is. It's on. Uh, Alcoa, which is doing very nicely. It's a stock that we were looking at. I, I wanted to buy it, didn't buy it. It's having a nice move. This could be early in its move, but that's not the issue. The issue is, look, Toll Brothers. Um, if you look at this on a daily basis, and then you go to it with just these three lines. The, the thick line is the price, current price, uh, the thick gray line. Green is when it goes above the 14-period moving average. So this is the 9 and 14-period moving average. So it's only got price, 9, and 14-period moving averages. So if I go to the weekly chart, you'll see that this moved down since the low that was made back in October, where it crossed positive. There was a brief couple of days where the 9-period moving average went pink and then went back to green. As it stands right now, it looks like it's very close in the weekly weekly chart, not the daily. It's already done that in the daily. But the weekly chart to crossing negative and going pink. Look at the Lenar has already gone pink. Uh, and that, and if you look at BLDR, that is Builders Resource, it's been pink for a little while. And that's, and that's a weekly chart. That tells me that particular sector is out of the loop right now. And then the question came in, so did your technicals fail you? And that's why you were trying to short the SMHs instead of just holding long and staying long. Well, let's go to the daily chart and say, no, 
The technicals have been fantastic, and they're still fantastic. But look at each one of those little ictuses, the little V-shaped turnarounds at the top. That's what I was trying to get to see whether or not that nine-period moving average green would turn pink. It never did. The easy thing I've been saying all the time is with all these charts, and this includes NVIDIA, is to, until it goes pink, green is your number. Green is the way to stay. I tried to time things. That's how we got that exact high the last time, May the 20th. In the Dow, we are, we're not short that anymore, but that's how we got the lows. It, it just, if you can get the outside, the turning point, it gives you a cushion. And that's what I've been trying to do. But no, the technicals were 100%. I personally did, it, uh, did, did not stick to the rule to say, the two rules. One is you try to get the outside. That's the, either the, the exact low or the exact top because it gives you a cushion for all the shenanigans that go on until there's a confirmation or you have to wait for the confirmation. And if you're looking at the SMH, the SMH is still green and it isn't time yet based on this technique to go short the SMHs. But if you're trying to time it, look, I got that exact high right there with the uh, SOXS, but then we got out only because it gets it shrinks every day, and therefore the stop that I had, which was a pertinent, a very tight stop, but still a pertinent stop, should never have been hit. But it was hit, and that's just a purely mechanical thing. So in that situation, I would still be short that, based on if I went short the SMHs themselves right at that high, it would still be a short position. And that would just be a timing thing. I'll talk about timing in a minute. I, I found something that was in my CD book, the uh, Chapman Wave, uh, uh, learning, uh, studying the Chapman Wave methodology. I'll get there in a moment. So absolutely, uh, a criticism of saying, "Wow, this is a, all the technicals are strong. Why do you why do you want to short the, the the best of the best?" Is because if you get the timing right based on other techniques, when it gets the confirmation, you're already in the position. That's kind of the reason why. Okay, I wanted to clarify that. I like to deal with every question as they come up. That way, I've got a clean slate. I just can. I, uh, there's no change in my methodology. So now let's go back to this here, and I wanted to just talk about something. So that's Toll Brothers. I need to just finish high grade copper. Is having a little bit of a, a bounce today. No, it's a big bounce. It's at uh, four fifty four. It's up twelve cents. So let's look at SCCO. Uh, SSCO is moving very nicely. Another bounce. Uh, that is Southern Copper. Uh, let's go to TGB. I'm always asked about that. It should be bouncing. Yes, it is. It's up a little bit. It's up nine cents at 254. Oh, ho, the bell just rang, and I'm going to see who that is. Opening the door, and we have, as I open the door, we've got Mark in Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Well, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. You would like to look Good. at. Yeah, I'd like to look at, so it's an ETF that I think tracks most close, closely with something called the Dow Jones um, Stock Market Completion Index. And um, <clears throat> it's one of the options I have in my 401k is a fund I can use. It's considered a small cap fund, but I think it's it's not quite, doesn't track the IWM. So I um, when you went long um, IWM yesterday, I decided to put some, throw some money at the small cap version of of this fund. I wanted to see if you could maybe um, do an analysis on it because, it, like I said, it's not the same as the IWM. Yeah, so this is, now I, I, I better write this down, VXF. I don't remember, I probably have, but I just, off the top of my head, since I, I've looked at thousands and thousands of charts over the years, I usually remember the symbols. I don't actually remember this VXF, so let me come back to it in a minute. I want you to look at RSP. I hope I've got it right, RSP. Yeah, so RSP is the S&P 500 Equal Weight ETF. And you can see how it made a high um, back in uh, May. Right, was that May? Let me just check the exact date. Yes, it was at, on the 20th of May, it went to it was the top for the Dow in the short term before it made that bottom. It went to 168887 uh, and here it is at 164.29. Look how long it's gone from the dreaded H to the lowercase M, and it just barely, it's held the left side low, and it's trying to make another arch formation. If you look at the weekly chart, you see it's trading within a rectangle, and this is the equal weight ETF. Now, if I go to the VXF, 
the moment I picked up this chart, I said, oh, I've seen this pattern before going sideways. So it's a little different. Now, let me see. So this is the Vanguard Extended. Eesh, what a name. Extended. <laughs> you could also um, type in um, for, a, for an index, DWC. DW. D. D D is in dog, W is in um, uh, whirlwind, C is in Charlie, P is in Paul, F is in Frank. And that's, oh, and uh, another that's one. like an, uh, looking at the SPX type thing. It's I guess like a, an, it's an index. So you could probably whatever symbol you use oh, to start. Just to give me the symbols again. Them. As you were talking, I was saying, then I lost it. D, C, T? No, D, W. Oh, D, W. C, Got w, C, P, F. P, S. Okay, well, different medicine to what I wrote before. Uh-oh. Oh, man. D for David. W for a win. C for Charlie. No, P. Oh, what? P, oh, P. P. P is in Paul. P is in Charlie. F is in Frank. D Got w it. P F. Got it. Here we go. No, we don't. Oh, I'll have to do it again. Oh, I'll be back in a moment, folks. The Dow is up uh, 16. S&P is off a uh, high a little bit, up 4. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kickstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. 
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. We're back. and we're on with Mark. And I'm just going to finish the notation here. I didn't do it during the break because I was busy trying to figure out what that symbol was. I'm sorry about that. But I'm listening to uh, other callers and they give a symbol and I, I say, oh, is that a P or is that a T? Or a... Let's do that again, Mark. I'm going to type it in. I'm finishing. The... Actually, no, let's do something else. Mark, VXF, I've got it right now. The way I'm looking at it, it looks to me like this one's stuck a little bit in a containment area. It's at 169.25. And the way it moves... I would say that as a portfolio, in a long-term portfolio, I I don't see leadership here. I see following. So I would much rather get the index that is correlated to closest. So let me just say that uh, if it goes back under 167, it's at 169.73 right now, it could be stuck for a longer period, and I wouldn't like to see that. So what was the other symbol? Mark there. Whoops. Uh, I'm not sure I did. So did I do something? Whoops. Maybe I, not I lost. Oh, there you are. Sorry, Mark. Okay, you're back. What, what, you want so, to give me the... Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So okay. it's all the stocks that are not in the S&P 500. It's all the mid caps and the small caps put together. Okay. And, so it's not like and, the dog... And, and, that, it's not like they used to call it the dogs of the Dow, which are the weakest. This is just the ones that didn't yeah. make it. That's all. Okay. And yeah. so the V so that is that the VXF or the one that the other one you're talking about? They're both they're both very similar. The other one is the Dow Jones Total Stock Market Completion Index. So it's everything that's not in the S and P five hundred. And that symbol is V as in dog, W, C yeah. as in Charlie, um, P as in Paul, F as in Frank. <laughs> Okay, that's so. Let me go. T W C. And it's an index, so you have to put the index P symbol before it. F. Oh, of course, I'm typing it in the wrong place. Let me do that again. Uh, it's a, so. Let me just see if I get it as a as a, as you've just mentioned it. No, I don't. So I have to go dollar sign. This is unusual. T W. Look at all those letters. C P F. I don't know. If I, oh, I've got it. Okay. If it, oh, it looks the same. It looks the same. All right. Yeah. That's so um, I, let me go. All right. So because it looks the same, I've already done notation on the other one. Let me tell you what I'm looking at. So what it, it kind of confirms what I was saying, that it wouldn't be a leading uh, indicator. It's more, it, it could at some point, but only if the others are starting to fail or it's just playing catch up. And the way I'm looking at it, it looks more like a catch up at this particular point. So I'd probably say, you know, I'd rather go with the core if I was going to do anything, this is a safer one because it doesn't doesn't quite have the the the, the vicissitude. It doesn't have the same kind of wiggling room that the others do. Um, so the VXF, I would just say to you, it looks like a slower mover, and until it starts trading, it's one sixty nine thirty, and until it starts actually trading for about a week or two above one seventy five. I think it's kind of stuck for now. So okay. I don't know if that helps you, but that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Yeah, I mean, my options are an S&P fund, a small cap fund, an international fund, a bond fund, or just the government security. So those are so kind of the five funds that I have depending, available in my, in my 401k, other right. than like life cycle funds. <laughs> so depending on what you have at this point as a diversification, with a ch just uh, there's a chance it's going now from about 47% to like 52 or 53 percent that the IWM, I, I, you know, this is a work in progress. I really need to see the full month of July. But that the IWM, you see, it's got, in a sense, it's got the same pattern as the VXF that you were talking about. The only mm -hmm. difference here is that um, it is something that fund managers will gravitate to 
and they'll love to gravitate to because it's the small caps that have a lot of upside potential because so many have been beaten down and mm -hmm. it's it's just more of a focus that's really what i'm saying so i okay. this is a work in progress if at any point it starts to get into the 20580 and then trays in the 206s for about a week or two i think money is going to start to flow into this and it could be the laggard just as i was saying the laggard of gold and silver being so poor for so long in the sense that they did not have the big move everyone anticipated and now look how quickly it's turned the corner there's a chance that money starts to flow into areas that maybe were okay earlier on going into the highs of april then they were weak and now can come back again. That's the way I'm looking at it as normal rotation. And that's all I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Hope that helps you. Thank you for calling. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, um, so for, and a happy fourth to you and the family. So I'm looking at this, folks, and I'm saying um, there was a question that came in, and it was a question about, uh, let me just do this first, because I, I know that Dan's waiting for an answer. Um Question about was it GSM? Uh, GSM. GSM, I think that's what was. Yeah. G GSM is Ferro Globe PLC. So the question was what was I looking at? And I said it's trading at 6.71. And I typed in that by about by Wednesday week, I wouldn't be surprised if this is getting closer. To the six, uh, did I say six twenty eight or six thirty one area? Yeah, and then the with the question mark and the question, <laughs> the answer there was, um, is that a statement uh, where I will start to build my position or change my position, or is that just a, a question? And I'm going to say to you, let me just do this right now. A, B, C, and it fails, but it doesn't take out the left side low, so that C is active. This becomes an A because that's your starting point right here. Let me just do this Chapman Wave methodology right here. And I'll circle it because this is your starting point at about the 428 or so level. And this didn't take out the low. So that becomes active because that's still the low and you want to get to a D. Then you can start to change the names. At this particular point, that becomes a new A. That becomes a B because there's your starting point, And that becomes a C. So if it takes out this leg in the weekly chart, if it takes out 6.19 by one penny, goes to 6.20, that starts new leg D. But look what it does in the monthly chart, which uh, three months ago turned green in the nine-period moving average. It becomes peak A, peak B, peak C. And it says now it might be working its way towards, this is Ferroglobe PLC. This is GSM as a symbol up 19 cents at 571 today. In the daily chart, it's in leg C as your starting point. That peak E was a top right there. Yeah, so I'm saying to you, one step at a time, 586 would be the next step. And if it doesn't, in this leg C, that's really positive. But I'm looking towards the $6 area to really give you clues as to if it does that in this particular move to the upside without a deep consolidation, I think the 621 area, I'd say by the end of next year. Hope I hope that serves the purpose that you want. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. 
But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so uh, Susan the Den wants to know about ADMA, which is Adma Biology Biologics Inc. It's in leg D in the monthly chart. It is in leg E in the uh, weekly chart. It's just a spectacular move to the upside. I think we discussed this some time ago. And and one of the things in in, the, in my Chapman Wave me methodology, I discussed this in great deal, a uh, great detail for years now, decades actually. That in the Chapman Wave methodology, your idea is to get the last notation correct as much as you can. That means if you go back and you have to make changes, make changes. You're not cheating. This is your technique. So in this case, there was an instant restart. I had an alternate count, and then I said, no, that peak F right there. Uh, back in uh, May, pulls back and holds the nine period moving average. It looks like the start of a peak A, B, little double top. Then it goes to a C, and right now it's in leg D, maybe a peak D. It looks fabulous. But at some point, you've got to expect a pullback. So the question wasn't – it was just an analysis, I believe. Let me just check. Um, has a great uptrend going on, looking to add – oh, looking to add – so what I'm going to say to you, uh, dude, is this. You could add right now, just based on what I was showing you on the SMHs and the 914 period moving average, as long as it keeps going up. If you want to add right now at 1139, this is purely a trading position. It could turn out to be something in the end. But right now, think of it as a trading position. My preference would be to have a little patience. It might take a week or two, but if it could pull back at 11.39 right now, if it could, could, could pull back under 10.80, at that point, give me a yell and we'll look at it. But yes, the way I would look at it in terms of 9 and 14, looks fantastic. Yes, the MACD's turned down, the Scastic's at 85%. That's good. I, I would say as a trading position, if you're prepared to trade it, and to put in a stop, I'd make the stop uh, 50 cents right now at 11.40. But if it breaks above peak D and goes to a layer, if, if this becomes a peak D today, and it can go above 11.50 and it goes to 11.51, immediately tighten that stop to maybe 15 cents, a really tight stop, and just see where it goes. Because so far, it's just making higher highs and higher lows. It looks great. I personally would want to wait a little bit, but I'm saying to you, you're in it. You could just have this as a, as a trading position, just a real short-term trading position. Next question, I, I, I wanted to just deal with this briefly. I'll get into I, – actually, I'll, I'll, change the, I'll change everything. I, I've spoken about the Chapman Wave. Um, here we go. This is the – right there. You see Chapman Wave stalk leg formation? And this is the weekly chart of Microsoft still going high. Today made another new all-time high. 
at 60.48. Um, I'm not going to deal with that right now other than to say it's still acting extremely well. It is getting overbought on a purely technical short-term basis, um, and I suspect that there will be a pullback. But how it takes out the low of just three days ago of 445.66 is going to be the question. Right now, it's an uptrend. This hasn't changed. This is the neck. It hasn't started the beak in the weekly. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm using this just as an example. I didn't want to show it because uh, it, it's done great, but it, it isn't. Uh, well, we'll see. So this is core mining, ink, silver, and gold. We are long. Um, this is a position that, look, this is the leg. In the, you remember the stalk leg formation with the leg, the long oval body? Mustn't be a rectangle. It's got to look like an oval. And then there's a break to the upside that says, oh, oh, that's the neck. Now, the neck usually concludes, and then there's a pullback, which becomes the beak. And that beak is how deep does it go? Well, you're already back into the arch formation high. So that's the high of 603. 605 that was made on the 31st of May. CDE is the symbol. It, today it hits 612. And it's now at 598. So this is a work in progress. I say there's an alternate way to look at it. It could just be an arch formation failure. So you need to see a, a, a push and preferably a close above that high of 604 or 605, whatever it was. So we'll see what happens. And in the weekly chart, I say there's a chance that it becomes a propeller shaft if it powers very high up into the 620s, maybe 630s in this move. So that's the Chamwave stalk leg formation. I was asked about it. There was a drawing on the left side. Someone said that showed the pattern, but you never discuss what it is. It's CD core Deline. Now it's called core mining. So now let me go back to this for the moment. Were there other questions? Uh, Yes. Wow, Nancy, is that a fact or is this just a joke? Nancy Pelosi just bought 10,000 shares of NVIDIA. Wait, wait, wait. 10,000 shares of NVIDIA? Wow. Uh, NVIDIA, 10,000 shares. Um, all right, good. Um, if that's what she wants, NVDA. Um, wow. Okay. Because I'm saying that if it, if it starts to trade under 118, 04 was the low. If it trades under 117, it's actually going to go at least down to the 112, 111 area. It hasn't done that yet, but that's what I'm saying. Because until if in this week, that's today and Friday, I'd even go into Monday. It really needs to get to the 127 area to say no, no, no. I'm back on the on the front burner, not the back burner. Huh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, all right. That next, let me see. Oh, oh. Uh, in the den, uh, in the Tiger YouTube, um, I, I didn't see who it was. Had mentioned. Uh, let's see. Was that baseball eyeballs? VXF. Oh, so I must tell Mark that VXF is actually the mid caps. So MDY is the mid caps. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, it looks very similar. Yeah, okay, S&P mid cap. See what I'm saying? This one's kind of stalled. Um, let me go back to the IWM. <laughs> and that's come back a little bit. It's only up 53 cents. It's a work in progress. Um, <clears throat> this one made a higher high. This one, the pattern is just slightly better. And I like it a little bit more, but I'm, I, I'm not going to praise it until it starts to trade quite a bit higher. I want to see the IWM trading. Can't just pop once. It's going to be trading above the 206 area sometime in by mid-June, by mid-July. That mid-June would be a little bit late. Um, okay. So another question came in. Could I look at, uh, where was it, where was it, where was it, where was it? Oh, yes. Uh, I wrote it down. There it is. Um for Wednesday, I did that, did that, did that. Yes, so I, I, I'll do this maybe on Friday. I wanted to talk a little bit more about it, but I'm just going to read it right now before the break, before we go to the last section. So, time frames, uh, 276. Oops, is this the one? Yes, 
So the Chapman Wave concept of time frames, this is from my CD, Introducing the Chapman Wave uh, Methodology CD book. It's, it's kind of a little bit out. It's, it's sort of almost out of print. I, I might have to print, but nobody uses CDs. I just have no clues to what to I'd love to take uh, three, four weeks and read you the whole thing into a different form. Anyway, the Chapman Wave concept of time frames. The concept of time frames is really one of perspective. The further away one looks, the longer the time frame required. The closer one looks, the shorter the time frame needed. If your annual doctor's appointment, you select a date for the next year's checkout. Now you're waiting a year. Then you pick the month, say July, then the week, um, say the second week, then the day, Tuesday, the 12th, then the time, 2 p.m. Now it's out of your thoughts, done with it. When I get back, we'll follow up on this. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm deciding now that on Friday, I'll have an, a review of my, my CD and book, uh, which is uh, out of print. I can make some more, I guess. Um, and I'll do that, but, and I'll talk about the Chapman Wave concept of time frames, uh, but this is the uh, the CD itself used to be on sale at uh, TFNN. We haven't had it for a while. I, I, just because if they don't even put CD uh, slots into uh, the uh, the one that I replaced uh, yesterday for that teacup spill um, has a CD slot. But mostly they don't have it. So I just don't know how to redo this. But this is introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. So let's get out of that. I'll do it Friday. I'm going to have a special session Friday discussing some important techniques. Mentioned in the den how uh, that Ford, 
Uh, let me just say, what was the statement? I'm not pitching forward more, just saying there is EV demand out there, which is to me, is silicone mining will be in demand, particularly support a new faster charging, longer lasting battery. Yeah, very good point. But Ford, I last night I was looking at it and I thought, this is amazing. I didn't realize over the last week how nicely Ford has done, gone, gone from the 12 a 22 area to 1289 it's not a big deal but it's a big deal in the sense that i'm i'm getting sales pictures from automobile companies and and i i think things have slowed down for sure and also people are not sure now there's about a a huge number of percentage do not people don't want to rebuy an ev they're not happy some are some aren't but that's what the statistics are but look at ford a nice bounce off the low it's trading at uh, 12.88.0 up 02. F is the symbol, and it's leg C in the uh, in the daily chart is an overlapping leg C, which says it should go to a D because it's in a buy mode. So that's on a very short term basis, and that's another reason. As I'm looking at the charts, I'm saying to myself, there's just enough residual strength to go higher right here, as opposed to the consolidation that I was expecting in the daily charts. We kind of had that in some. But if you look at those weak charts, almost all of them are still so strong. I mean, look at this. If I go to the, uh, uh, let's just go to the Q. Yeah, you're all time high as we speak. Amazing.